Dr. Pescatori, inflammation, it's a very common word these days with medical conditions. Can pycnogenol help with inflammation? Can it help reduce taking pain for inflammation? And that's a big question, but I, it's a big word out there. Oh, absolutely. I mean, inflammation is the buzzword of the 21st century. Oh, it I is. Mean, it really it? has gotten, and, and the beauty, of, at least of it for me, is uh, from a scientific point of view and a clinician mm -hmm. point of view, is that we're learning that inf inflammation and inflammatory conditions are really the bottom line of health. At least that's that's where we've gone. We've taken it down to the next level. And who knows, you know, 20 years from now, what the level underneath inflammation is going to be? Because there will be one, as we, as we rip apart these layers and study things mm -hmm. and realize. But when you realize over 150 million Americans, 150, so that's over half of us, okay. suffer from one form of inflammatory disease or another. And inflammatory disease is heart disease. We now know that heart right. disease is inf inflammatory. Diabetes is inflammatory. Um, so many different diseases diseases are inflammatory. Alzheimer's disease is inflammatory. I mean, the list goes on and on. Arthritis. You know, yes. the most common thing people think about is, of course, arthritis. Mm -hmm. Joint pains, mobility issues. You know, so, so many people think about that as inflammation. But inflammation, oh, inflammatory bowel disease. Mm -hmm. You know, people think about that a lot um, as inflammation. But there's so many things. 150 million Americans suffer from one form of chronic inflammatory condition or another. 150 so, million. And pycnogenol works on inflammation because it actually, it's an anti-inflammatory, it's a natural anti-inflammatory agent because it works on the same pathways as the drugs do. The mm -hmm. COX inhibitors, COX-1, COX-2, mm -hmm. prostaglandin synthesis works on all of those pathways, thromboxane, all of them, the same pathways that drugs like Tylenol and Aleve and what, what have you work mm -hmm. on. And they, it all works on the same pathways, celebrates all those drugs. So it is the same pathways, drugs. whether it's, it's uh, pharmaceutical or whether it's over the counter. Right. And pycnogenol works on those same pathways. All right. Well, that's and, good to know. Right. So it works to reduce inflammation on a very basic level. Hmm. And the same level, you, know, you can put them head to head and it does the pathways work identically and they block right. the enzymes that do what they're supposed to do and that's way too technical for this. But, but without side effects, right? Correct without side effects. That's the beauty of it. I mean, when we know, I mean, they take the, they've taken some of those NSAIDs off the market because of it. NSAIDs are the leading cause of, of liver failure in this yeah. country. I mean, it's the most common, it's the most common, they're the most commonly used drugs in America. Why? Because 150 million of us suffer from an inflama inflammatory condition. Right, we're and in so pain. And so when you have pycnogenol, mm -hmm. when you have something that's so natural, like pycnogenol, that's processed without pesticides, without any, any toxic solvents even. I mean, it's, even in the processing of it, there's nothing dirty or nasty that can mm -hmm. get in there. So you have this wonderful natural product that you don't have to take, I mean, that lasts in the body for 24 hours, that you can literally take once a day. The studies that, all the studies that have been done, and, there, and by the way, there's over uh, 40 years of clinical research on this. Mm -hmm. There's over 280 scientific publications. When you look at that research and literature, and, uh, and uh, it, it's just remarkable to me mm -hmm. what, what it can do. And you, you brought up a question and it, at the beginning of this, mm -hmm. and one of it was, can it reduce yes. the use of pain medication? And there's actually just a very recent study that came out that showed that it can. It can. It can reduce the use. And, and the longer you take it, the, the more you could reduce the pain medication. And, 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 and the studies show up to 78% you can reduce the use of your non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications the longer you take it. At 30 days, you know, X number of people, 60 days, X number mm -hmm. of people, 90 days. So take pycnogenol for 90 days, and I'll bet you you're inflammatory, and you'll start to use less inflammatory, anti-inflammatory medication, because those things are just not healthy for us. From the ulcers that they cause, to the mm -hmm. gastritis that they cause, right. to so many different things. I mean, yeah, yeah sure, liver failure is the end stage of, right. of those things, but before that, I mean, how many patients have I seen come into a hospital because they've gotten ulcers from taking their, their pain medication? Okay. And then you've got people on things like Coumadin, which are blood thinners, and all of these things, and they're taking, N, you know, they're taking NSAIDs, and they're bleeding, mm -hmm. and it's just, it's, it's, just, it's just not right. What a remarkable find. Having pycnogenol, mm -hmm. it's been amazing to me. It's been, it's a, been an amazing part of my practice. It's opened up my practice completely to just different novel approaches and it makes the patients happy. 